All right. Good morning, afternoon, students at Echo Glen. This is Miss Dewey. We are going to move on to Miss Dewey's reading class, lesson three, part C. Share my screen. And we're going to get moving. Okay, so we're talking about our reading comprehension skills today. So this is part four. So part four reading comprehension skills is comparing and contrasting. So when we compare something, it is what is the same or similar between two things. When we contrast, it is what is different between two things. So I'm going to show you a short YouTube clip about comparing and contrasting by flow vocabulary. If it works. Flow uh, vocabulary. We're comparing and contrasting. Everybody's doing it. In fact, we do it all the time. We compare and contrast with where to start, deciding what cereal to buy. We compare and contrast when we pick out what movie to see or what player we want for our fantasy football league. I'll break it down for you. Check comparing and contrasting. Get with it. That's when you think how things are similar and different. When I compare things, I talk about how they're the same. When I contrast, it's the differences that I name. I analyze how they're similar and different. I look at them close. Yeah, I get specific. I compare and contrast two books, three fools, two unicorn dudes named Hopi and Stu. Yeah, that's how we do. But what's even wiser? Before I write, I'm going to use a graphic organizer, a Venn diagram. Yeah, I'll show you that. I just draw two circles that overlap. In the middle, I'll write whatever's the same. Just list the differences in the other spaces. The three things to compare. What should I do then? I could add a third circle. So then, let's get it in. I compare when I say how things are similar. Like dollhouses and ponies, both miniature. I contrast when I say how things are different. Give examples and get specific. You get it? When I say how things are similar or the same, yeah, I bet that sounds so familiar. I contrast when I say how things are different, give examples and get specific. Get okay, I have to write an essay. Here's the prompt. Would you rather be a wolf or a domesticated dog? Domesticated dog is like a pet. I'm going to compare and contrast. That'll help me pick. I use transition words to help my readers know that I'm comparing and contrasting. Here we go. First, I'll compare how they're the same. Both have fur coats for the wind, snow, and rain. Domesticated dogs love to play together. Similarly, both puppies will play in any weather. Pet dogs have paws. Wolves do as well. Likewise, they both will eat meat. Can you tell? To see how they're different, let's contrast. Most wolves have longer teeth, and that's a fact. If a wolf gets sick, uh-oh, there's no medicine. In contrast, let's go to the vet. They let them in. Domesticated dogs don't worry about food. They get fed in a bowl. I bet they love it too. Unlike a wolf, which has to hunt. And if it can't find much food, they go hungry for months. A wolf can run free, do anything it pleases. While domesticated doggies are tied up with leashes. So while I might like to be a pet dog for a while, I want to be free. That's the call of a wild. I'm a pet. compare when I say how things are similar, like dollhouses and ponies, both miniature. I contrast when I say how things are different. Give examples and get specific. You get it? I compare when I say how things are similar or the same. Yeah, I bet that sounds so familiar. I contrast when I say how things are different. Give examples and get specific. You get it? Okay. So... Just like they, oh my goodness, I went forward again. Okay, so just like in the video you watched from vocabulary, this is a Venn diagram. So what is happening is whatever it overlaps is the same. Whatever is on the outside is what is different. So the comparison is the same as the overlapping circles, but it's different is called contrasting, which would be the different on the outside. 
So I want you to create your own Venn diagram to compare and contrast from what you know about the Disney version of Cinderella and the grim version you're about to read. Think about what is the same about each story and what is different. Fill in your diagram as you read the first part of the story. So what you're going to put is similar or same in the middle. On one side, it should say Disney. On the other side, it's, it should say Grimm, G-R-I-M-M. -M. The Grimm version is the version we're going to read as part of our reading comprehension. OK, I'm going to stop there. And when we come back, we're going to do lesson three, part C, which is the reading passage. We're going to read the Grimm version of the Grimm Brothers version of Cinderella. Okay, see you back in a minute.